Hello, good people, and welcome to another tutorial where we are going to connect Google Docs to OpenAI with Langchain. Now, why do we have to do this at all in the first place? Mm, well, you could imagine it would get pretty tedious copying and pasting your Google Doc contents over to OpenAI. And in fact, OpenAI has a character limit, not a character limit, a token limit, where you can only put in certain amounts of information. So if you wanna do this at scale or you wanna do it programmatically, you're gonna need a library to help you out with that. And that library is gonna be Langchain. Now, here you are, Mr. or Mrs. or Miss cool person at your company and you're gonna do a lot of really awesome business impact. And the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna be connecting Langchain with Google Drive and OpenAI so that you're able to summarize your documents and ask questions for them. You could imagine these could be your product docs, your user research interviews, your internal knowledge base that your company is using or whatever it may be. So let's jump into some code and let's see what we're doing here. But before we do that, I wanna set, set up our documents. So here I have a fictitious product document that I wanna analyze with OpenAI. I have an introduction and our product is a marketplace that connects startups employees who wants to sell vested equity to buyers of secondary market shares. So we want a way for employees to be able to sell their secondary market shares, which is cool. We have an introduction, we have a problem statement, and we have some cool product features. And by the way, this was all made via OpenAI. Uh, a second document that we have is user interviews. So we have one user interview here with a user named Sally and Eliza is gonna be interviewing her. So let's go over to the code and let's summarize these and ask some questions for them. So the important part here and what enables this is a document loader that Langchain supports called Google Drive Loader. This means that you can go in, you can uh, initialize the class, and then pass it a list of document IDs. And these document IDs you can find up here in the URL, up at the top, in between a few of these forward slashes. And with those, you can pass a list of these document IDs to this parameter. And the cool part about this too, is after I already opened up the documentation, you can also pass a folder ID. So if you have a whole bunch of different files that you want to include in there. Now I'm only passing one, but I'm still putting it in as a list and I'm passing my uh, credentials for Google as well. So here we got it ready. We loaded it up and then now we actually call dot load into these docs. And so let's actually take a look at what docs looks like. You can see here that we have all the text from that file that I just showed. It's a little different format, but no worries. Uh, OpenAI can read it. And if I were to take a look here, if I were to do type docs, it's just a list, just a list of documents. Cool. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up my OpenAI LLM and I'm going to load in the load summary summarize chain. All right. We'll call that. And then I'm going to call OpenAI. I passed my API key, API key here in the background. And I'm gonna load summarize chain. I'm gonna pass in the language model that we wanna use, in this case, OpenAI. The chain type, we're gonna do MapReduce today. Uh, let me know if you want another tutorial on MapReduce and how those all work. And I'm gonna do verbose equals false here. I'll show you what that means in a sec. And then we'll call dot run. And so what this is gonna do is this is gonna summarize for us. So let's wait and let's give it a second. And then all of a sudden we get a summary about what our doc says, which is the product doc that we had. Now, if we wanted to see what was Langchain doing underneath the covers, I'm gonna say verbose equals true. And then what you can see is kind of the logic that Langchain is following and how it's thinking. So prompt after following, what it does here is Langchain will actually insert these words into there and say, write a concise summary of the following. And then we pass in all, basically it's our doc that we had. Concise summary, okay, cool. It knows that it's done and then it outputs that data to us, which is cool. Now, say we wanted to ask questions of this document. Well, we need to load in a different chain in that case. So I'm gonna load in a QA chain here and I'm gonna ask it a question, which I'm gonna store in a variable called query. Doesn't matter what that's called. And then I'm gonna instantialize <coughs> or initialize uh, the, the chain with the LLM and we have chain stuff. We'll run that. We're gonna input our docs and give it our query between the two. So all of a sudden I asked, what problem is this product solving? Because all products should be solving a good problem. This product is solving the problem of the lack of a viable secondary market for startup equity. Sweet, that's really cool that we are able to ask a question against our own personal doc. Now, another question, which takes a little bit more creativity, they can't just regurgitate this from the doc. How should we reach our target audience of this product? Let's go ahead and let's run this on here. I for both equals false. 
Um, we should reach our target audience by leveraging digital marketing channels such as social media, search engine, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I'm kind of interested to see what this one looked like behind the behind the covers here. And so it looks like Langchain actually inserts this into the um, prompt here. Use the following pieces of context to answer the questions at the end. If you don't know the answer, just say that you don't know. Just uh, don't try to make up the answer. So we have this right here. And then all of a sudden they say question and helpful answer. So underneath the covers here, Langchain is helping out with some prompt engineering to really uh, optimize and streamline how we get uh, extracted information from OpenAI. Well, there's also more. Right now we just used one doc. Say you actually wanna add two docs. So in this case, I am gonna load up my uh, document IDs of my second Google Doc. In this case, it's gonna be the user research interview that we saw beforehand. I'm gonna pass it my credentials. Then I'm gonna load this into a new doc, and I'm actually just gonna extend that list that we had beforehand with the new doc that we have. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, cool. And you know, I wanna show you what this looks like, first of all. So we had our first doc up there, and we have our second document right here. So we have both these docs loaded up for us, which is sweet. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, here's the query. What are users actually saying about our product? I'm gonna load in the chain again, and I'm gonna pass our docs, which now has two documents in there. I'm gonna load this in with our question and with the query. And all of a sudden we get that users are saying the product is a good idea and that it could be helpful for startup employees who wanna unlock the value of their uh, financial goals. So let's do verbose equals true. Nope, it's not on that one. It's gonna be on this call for both equals true. And let's see what's happening underneath the cover here. So it looks like it's passing in a bunch of information. Cool, actually passed in both docs in this case and passed in the second interview. Okay, cool. And users saying, so we get our answer right there. Um, so just to productionalize this a little bit more for you, um, let's take a look. I showed you that this uh, docs variable is a list. We'll say you wanted to remove one of them. The way that I would do that is you could simply just do docs. Dot uh, you could pop and so you could pop the last one off and you can see here there's only one left but if you wanted to programmatically make sure that you were selecting the right one well then here i'm just pulling off the first um, document and i'm pulling out uh, the dict to see what the parameters are we have the page content but then down here we also have some metadata about the document as well so we can understand which document we are uh, removing there so cool now if you want help with this on your business please let me know. I'd love to strategize about how we can make this happen here. And I'm super curious to see the other applications that would be valuable to you. So please let me know, either comment or hit me up via email and we'll have some fun. I'll see you later.